When working together, the situation can arise where changes have been made to the same file by different people. To simulate this, add a line to the end of Anne's text file 2 and add a different line to Ben's copy of text file 2. Have Anne commit and push the change. Now have Ben commit his change. And then try to merge the changes by pulling Anne's change. Now we see a new icon, the yellow warning sign. It also appears at the bottom of the screen with the number 1. This icon indicates a conflicted file. So what happens if we try to commit this? Well, here's another good reason never to commit anything without testing it. If we would commit this conflicted file, we might make the mistake of staging the conflict itself. Git puts three lines into every place where conflicting changes are found, indicating the differences in such a way that you could fix it by hand, or have a merge tool like kdiv3 fix it. If you would stage the changes in the conflicted file, these git annotations would be committed into the file as well, and that is of course not what we want. Now if you find yourself in this situation, where you have made some mistakes during a merge, you could panic, because unstaging the changes doesn't bring back the nice conflict icon. If at any time you want to go back to before it got messed up, open the Actions menu, go to Resolve Conflicts, and choose Restart Merge. So, we're back at the conflict. We've seen that staging the conflict doesn't help. What should we do then? On every conflicting file, right-click, go to Resolve Conflicts, and select Launch External Merge Tool to open KDIF3. If nothing happens, you need to tell Source Tree which merge tool you want to use. In this case, go to Tools, Options, and the Diff tab. Set both External Diff Tool and Merge Tool dropdowns to KDIF3 and click OK. Trying again, the tool will open this time. KDIF3 reports that there is one unsolved conflict, so let's resolve this. You see three versions of the conflicted file. A or base is the version before the changes, B or local is the version that was already committed by whoever is performing the merge, in this case Ben. C or remote is the version that is being merged in from another committer, in this case Anne. Now Ben can choose how to merge these changes. Of course, there are several possibilities. He could decide that with both these options available, it is best not to include either. He would then right-click in the lower pane, the output panel, on the merge conflict line, and select the option to select lines from A. That means neither new line will be added or he could uncheck A, and select only the line from B. Or only the line from C. Or after he added C, also add the line from B. Which gives a different result from adding B first, and then C. The order of the lines is different. Lastly, he could decide that the changes are best put together in a different way. In the output panel, simply add it to conflicting lines to reach the desired result. Whichever option you choose, you have to save the file and close kdiv3 to continue in Source 3. Now you see the staged changes reflect the file as saved in kdiv3. After resolving all conflicts, you can now commit the merged changes. If you did anything other than simply merging, sometimes you end up with some files that have the .org extension, containing the marked up files as we've seen before. If you are satisfied with the merge files you've committed, just delete this extra file by right-clicking it and selecting Remove. Now that the conflict has been resolved and the merge committed, Ben can push it to the remote. 
and of course Anne can pull it. And both versions of Text File 2 now have the edited version. You now know enough to really get started using Git. Before you do, however, there is one useful thing left that you should know, and that is how to keep some files in the folder out of the repository and not have them show up in the unstaged files all the time. I'll show this in the next video.